Well, good evening, everybody. So how many entrepreneurs in the room tonight? Okay. How many have uh, raised their first round of capital? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm a scientist by training. I'm a PhD organic chemist. I'll tell you a little bit about the business where you can tell from this slide, we're an advanced materials company. So we'd had a year on essentially under our belt with COVID-19 and people in hospital, right? Really sick. They go in to the hospital, you know, they're intubated, uh, they're catheterized. They have a central venous catheter. So they have all these lines going into their body. And those are all entry points for bacteria and, and fungal organisms. So this is really a story about what happens when two pandemics meet right? Because the healthcare associated infection pandemic has been with us for a long time. We just don't really hear about it, but it kills 100,000 Americans every year, year in and year out. And it costs $5 billion a year to treat those patients. Now worse with COVID because when you intubate, they are in deep trouble. They're sick already. They're immunosuppressed. They're getting corticosteroid therapy. And so this is just a really bad you know, set of circumstances. So these are the, the five infections that I made reference to. 60% uh, of them are medical device related. And we're focused in urology. And although the competitors are big, we're gonna do things that they can't do. So this shows you how big that catheter associated urinary tract infection problem is. You know, almost a million infections. These are in hospital only. This is not long-term care. This is not at home. This is just massive. And again, every year, 13,000 dead people as a consequence, 17 million scripts for antibiotic therapy to treat these broad spectrum antibiotics, that's a bad thing. 600 plus million in expenses just for this type of infection treatment in hospitals alone every year. This is my story and you can take from my story what you want to put into your story. It's really important to reach your potential investors and convince them that the story that you're telling is worth them writing a check. So how do we address HAIs? This is what a patient in the ICU for COVID-19, severe COVID-19 illness might look like as an example. These four devices are life-saving. You can't, with severe COVID, you can't live without having these devices plugged into you. They're all incredibly susceptible to infection. So this is an important slide for anybody who's thinking about a business. This is the actionable opportunity that's available to my company right now. When we get to market with our products that I've got on my product map, this is that big acorn that's sitting out there that I can take pieces of. This is this, this is the size of the market looking forward looking now. Yes, it's still growing, right? There's another slide that you need to start thinking about, you know, how are we going to get into the market, right? Once we have a product, what are we going to do, right? Or how are we going to make money? How are we going to monetize whatever we've created? So for us, we're going to create a catheter, right? But we also created a, a special set of materials. We have licensing opportunities as well. So we really have a hybrid business model. It's not just direct sales, it's direct sales and licensing and sales of the materials that we make. Direct sales will be the modifiers that I talked about, the urological devices, of which there's three. And then we're going to outsource our sales team. We're going to use independent sales reps, at least early on, because that's the most cost-effective way to do it. And we're also going to talk to target customers, you know, key opinion leaders, and we're going to bring them into the fold as well. The last point on that slide, we're going to license our technologies. We're going to really ramp up business development because there's a lot of opportunities. And another important slide, um, we're pretty lean right now internally, but uh, I have uh, a number of uh, business science and uh, medical advisors, and I rely on them as, as much as I need to. Some of them may even become board members at some point. So this is something you want to give some thought to. So this is a high, very high level uh, look at how we approach, we're going to approach the market. These are the things that we can do in the clinical environment with the things that we've created. And this is my concept of the protective sphere around a patient. If we can prevent microorganisms from taking up residence and surviving on these surfaces, then we can better protect the patient that's getting therapy in the clinical institution. So this is a very high level, but it, it's, it tells a good story, right? This is part of the story. This is you're saying to your investors, this is what we can do. 
if we build the right partnerships, then we can make you a lot of money. You have to know what your competition is. Everybody has competitors, everybody. So we know who they are, we know what they do, and that's why I talk about what people do with coatings, right? Coatings and on catheters is the way that companies go today. And the reason they do that is because they can build one product and they can take that product and coat it and then they have two products. One's a premium, one's not premium. For a urinary catheter, they're labeled for 28 days of use. These coated catheters work for about seven days. So we already know there's a market opportunity. We know to, to this point in time that our catheter uh, in urine lasts for more than 28 days. We know who our competitors are in the urology market, and we know who our competitors are in the antimicrobial materials market. And that little graph on the bottom just gives you an example of how potent our material is. So this is that tube up above plugged into a continuous flow device. That continuous flow device is inoculated with 10,000 organisms of uh, E. coli. And you can see that the, the data points on the blue purple line below indicate that within four hours, every one of those organisms is no longer in existence. Lots of third party verification and the virus work we don't do internally. Fungal work we don't do internally either. So we're, we're a very IP heavy company. Right? So we are going to rely on having strong intellectual property. So you're going to want to talk to your investors about why you have an advantage. They're going to ask you about freedom to operate. For a small company, we have pretty broad intellectual property coverage. We file in, in foreign markets, obviously in the U.S. as well. We have a lot of trade secrets. We don't put everything in our patents. That's another thing to think about if you're going to be filing IP. You tell a good story, but not too good. We have manufacturing considerations, obviously. We're, we're, we don't want to be, from FDA's perspective, we don't want to be considered a manufacturer, so we use qualified CMOs or contract manufacturing. Another slide you're going to want to have, this is traction, and this is traction for IASIS. And I've been doing this for a while, since 2015 now. This is a very, you know, has been a very complex problem. This has been a lot of development. The science has taken a bit longer than, than I thought it would, but it's very robust now. And we have all of our manufacturing documents in place. So the urology material was funded initially by about 1.8 million. I have two active grants now. Uh, and most recently, I, I made note that we just received a notice of a translational research award from the C Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program of the Army. Me. In terms of commercialization, we're now uh, engaged in technical due diligence with a multinational, multi-billion dollar company that's interested in, in our tech. We have also uh, engaged a consulting firm to move us in the direction of EPA submission or you know, application for registering our antimicrobial agents so they can be used in food applications, food contact applications, as well as paints and coatings. So all EPA and FDA, I couldn't ask for a worse problem to have, <laughs> really. <laughs> and we have, uh, as I mentioned, a, an evolving patent portfolio. We have some issued patents, a couple of issued patents. So our revenue model, as I mentioned, is a blend, it's hybrid, and I are already talked about a lot of these things, but royalties and, and product sale revenue, as well as material sale revenue. And this is projected revenue. This doesn't really tell the story of the complexity of, of the model that, that I developed in order to, to get to these numbers. But just in urology alone, without licensing, without material sales, we I believe we can build a $100 million company in seven years. If anybody has any questions about putting their deck together, questions about the logistics or the order, I, I'm more than happy to help. It took me probably a little more than a year to think about really how to tell the story. It's a story, that's really what it is. It's your story and it's not easy. So another slide you're gonna to wanna to have here as well. So why does somebody wanna invest in your company? So this takes a lot of thought as well. You know, what are you gonna do that nobody else can do that's gonna make them wanna invest in you? So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs>